On this week's episode of the DevOps Lab, we're back again with the DevOps Dojo team. We're going to be talking about experiential learning. So tune in and join us to learn all about experiential learning. Welcome back to the DevOps Lab. We're back again with our great series from the DevOps Dojo folks. In this week's episode, we're going to talk about experiential learning. And with us this week, we have two guests from the DevOps Dojo team, Arlene Carr and Julia Kupani. Welcome to you both. Thank you, April. Great to have you. Thank you, April. Really, really excited to have you both. Really see, great to see you both from the DevOps Dojo team talking about experiential learning and all the things that you're bringing from the team. Harleen, could you first introduce yourself to everyone? What do you do at Microsoft and how did you get involved at the DevOps Dojo team? Hi everyone, I'm Harleen Kaur based out of India. I joined Microsoft in January, 2020 as a DevOps and information security consultant. Within the first month of joining this amazing organization, I was introduced to Dojo community. And it is now an extended family for me, which is spread across the globe. That's awesome. And especially joining joining during the pandemic, just kind of as everything was kicking off to have that family environment is fantastic. Julia, over to you. What do you do for Microsoft and how did you get involved with the Dojo team? Thank you, April, for asking. And hi, everybody. So I'm Julia. I'm based in Switzerland, but I am Italian. I live in Zurich. Uh, I joined Microsoft in 2018 as a consultant in the Azure Cloud and Artificial Intelligence domain. My focus has always been Azure infrastructure and DevOps capabilities and practices. I joined, I was lucky enough to join the DevOps Dojo team in 2019. So it has been uh, two years, more, actually more than two years, uh, that I've been part of this amazing team. I joined to, to help as a tester for the hands-on lab of the White Belt Masterclass. The Masterclass is an experiential experience, um, is an immersive experience, actually. It's very interactive where certified coaches will guide attendees through a DevOps journey, uh, deep diving into DevOps uh, capabilities, practices, and the pillars of the DevOps taxonomy. I was super lucky because I got to experience what we call uh, learning from peers. I have been uh, shadowing two of my peers and I felt uh, super uh, comfortable in asking questions. I felt in a super nice environment where I could be myself. And actually I was just approaching the DevOps mindset, culture, so I was not experienced enough. And uh, the DevOps Dojo team, uh, welcomed me as part of uh, uh, of them, one of them. And uh, little did I know that in a few months, I've been asked to actually be one of the coach of the uh, masterclass in Seattle. So the DevOps Dojo team gives you chance to experience new things, uh, going out of your comfort zone, and it can be frightening, but with a team that uh, look above your shoulders and that uh, backs you up, you are good to go. So this is how I started my journey with the DevOps Dojo. That's awesome. And you both have had such great experiences, especially during a pandemic and so much going on. And both of you have gotten that sense of community from the Dojo team, which I think is fantastic. Julie, I have a question for you. Um, in your Dojo team experience, what do you think the thing, what, what do you think is the thing that you've learned the most in your, your, your time with the team or the biggest takeaway you've had since joining the Dojo team? Well, I've always been a um, coach for the ends on lab of the master classes. So it doesn't it didn't matter actually how many time I was delivering the same content to, to different attendees, but I've always learned something new because of the different attendees background, the different attendees perspectives. So it was awesome. The content was always the same, but I was learning by teaching. So I found that teaching is very valuable to keep learning and keep challenging yourself with different things. But the most important and challenging experience I've had was to lead the first white belt um, masterclass to a customer in a remote way in EMEA. Um, like why in a remote way? Due to the pandemic, we used to, um, 
conduct and lead masterclass in person so that you could have had, you know, like the social um, kind of feeling with the people. You could have, you know, talk about different things and you could have seen if the attendees were engaged in the masterclass. In a remote world, this could not happen as easily as it would have been in person. But, you know, in this team, we used to say, the bigger the problem, the bigger the opportunities. So we leverage the remote uh, way of working and uh, um, we brought people from all over the world to conduct this masterclass uh, to a real customer. So we brought expertise from uh, the US, from China, from India, from all over the globe to enrich the experience that our customer was having. So. Um, I think that uh, this could not have been possible without also a team that backs you up and a partner. We found that it is important to have two main people, two captains that lead the masterclass and that support each other because everything can happen in a remote world. You lose connection, you lose uh, people because of uh, um, troubleshooting problems, that whatever could happen actually in uh, into. A remote world. So having also a timing perspective, so having somebody who you can rely on and you can, you know, like uh, make a strategy together really mm -hmm. helped a lot. That's so awesome. I, I love that phrase, by the way. I just want to say the bigger the problem, the bigger the opportunity. I think that absolutely encompasses the dojo mindset and everything else you guys as a team have experienced. So sorry, go ahead. Keep going. This is some great information. Yeah, no, I think that uh, what brings us all together is this passion for what we do. And we kind of, I found in this team, not just colleagues, but friends, because we support each other, whatever the problem is, whatever the issue or the struggle is, we are one team. And this is uh, what uh, keep us together, actually, and make us work so good together. That's awesome. Such great insight, such a great family model. And actually, every single one of the DevOps Dojo episodes I've done, I've noticed we, we've had every different people from different teams. All of you have talked about the environment, the inclusivity on the teams, the kind of that family feel and the openness to share, which I think is critical in that DevOps culture change. Thank you, Julia. That was awesome. Harleen, I want to ask you a question. So I love learning. Others don't always, but how do you make learning interesting for others? Because people have different types of learning styles and people have different um, ways they want to learn and maybe they don't want to learn, which is something we encounter a lot in DevOps uh, changes and culture changes. So how do you make it interesting for people? So uh, for me, when I joined uh, the Dojo community, uh, my knowledge for DevOps, it was more focused on uh, capabilities like continuous planning, integration, delivery, and so on. Little did I knew about culture, lean product management, value stream mapping. So uh, the experts within the Dojo community like Kantang and many others, they helped me to expand my knowledge on this front. Mm -hmm. Another great thing which I observed in Microsoft was uh, the focus on accessibility. And then within the Dojo community, we started developing uh, an IP, creating an IP uh, on user experience and accessibility. And this is when I got a chance to interact with a lot of accessibility experts in Microsoft. And it was like, oh man, I never thought about this thing. How can I miss this part? So from that day onwards, there is never a project, never a customer delivery where I do not think about accessibility. In fact, I have gone ahead and taught my work group about accessibility and ensured that they also think about it. Then uh, another thing we do to make learning interesting, it is, um, it is like we try to include gamification okay mm -hmm. so when when we are learning as a team uh, or uh, we pass on the learnings to uh, other people within microsoft we do run quizzes i remember when we did a github boot camp uh, we ran quizzes for participants and people had so much fun uh, like they were super motivated to be part of those quizzes because they had some amazing goodies to win Learning, uh, I would say, uh, like you said, it is an amazing topic and there is so much research uh, that is available on this topic. And you can read about uh, the experiential learning on our blog as well. 
so uh, learning it can increase many fold if we have the fun factor in it right uh, so whenever within dojo community we are learning certain concepts we try to have discussions on those concepts so that we are able to clarify our doubts we are able to learn from uh, the people in the field and while we are having those discussions they can be in the form of like a normal conversation like we are having right now or it can be a role play okay so we can wear different hats like if if i'm a consultant uh, but i i would think from a consultant's perspective but when i'm in a role play i get a chance to think maybe from an architect's perspective maybe uh, from from a program manager's perspective so this is something which makes things super interesting thinking from a very different perspective and learning uh, from the experiences of others and I think you're right. I think it brings about empathy as well. When you understand other people's shoes, especially with accessibility and other people's roles, what they're going through, what they what they need to do to fulfill their role. Um, and the gamification piece is, is really important and learning should be fun. And I actually had a manager um, tell me, you know, a couple years ago, we were, we were working on a customer project. We were implementing DevOps principles, migrating the customer to the cloud, all sorts of challenges, new ways of working and cultural changes. And we had cultural barriers as well. And he said to us, he goes, look, learning should be fun. When you were a kid, you learned by having fun. Kids learn through play. He goes, coding should be fun. And we made coding fun in our project with the customer. So it took off that stress of trying to get the customer to achieve more with new DevOps principles and new things. We kind of gamified it and it became fun. Coding became play along with the DevOps um, ceremonies that we implement into the customer as well. So we gamified a little bit and brought in that that lightheartedness and empathy and it worked really well so it's great to see you guys have that as well thank you harley awesome yeah just one thing i want to add there april we always say that look at these kids like they are learning so yep. fast how, how yep. they can do that right this is because they play around with things. They do not have that fear of failure within them. So yes. within Dojo community, we have uh, that psychological safety to try out mm -hmm. things, share our opinions. And it does not matter if we fail. It's like we are learning new things. Absolutely. Absolutely. And again, I think, you know, you both have just highlighted it. You know, the it's, it's another opportunity to move forward, right? So absolutely. Um, and I think, you know, when you have these learnings, you're going to realize that you're not the only person that has these challenges. And I found out in a lot of customer projects as well. Julia, how do you find effective ways to share your learnings? Because there's going to be someone else out there that has going to have the exact same issue. Absolutely. So after every masterclass, actually after every delivery that we do, we used to share a newsletter. We have these habits of sharing what were our learnings, what we could have improved, what were our success as well. So, you know, like having some time to actually sit and think and process all that you have done, everything that you have done with the team and with the, uh, the masterclass helps you to make to see things into a different perspective and to learn from them even more. We also, um, I also had the chance to collaborate into the blog Experiential Learning. So I contributed with uh, my experience and, you know, like just uh, sit there and uh, think about my experience with the DevOps Dojo team. What did I learn? What did I do? What did I achieve? It has been very, very interesting for me because it's like, a you like time with you and your keyboard, like and you think and reflect and you put these things into a different uh, uh, perspective. But as well, we now are inner sourcing all our content of the belt that we created and uh, writing about something technical. It's also a, a challenge sometimes because you need to structure things, things that you think to, that you think that you know, but then you need to put them clearly stated for somebody else to understand and to um, and to relate with what you are writing. So this was super interesting for me as well. And another experience of writing um, that really helped me to, to share uh, what I was doing was um, writing for the ends on lab, the instruction. Um, so you need to write instruction for different uh, kind of audience. So people that are more experienced with the technology, people that are less experienced with the technology. So you also see 
other um, point of view, like how could like somebody who didn't know about, or who doesn't know anything about the technology, uh, understand it better? And I think that uh, it kind of give you some reflection time and say, and you like sometimes you just speak, right? And you talk and you say, yeah, I did this, I did that. But when you write things they kind of feel real, right? Like, what did, look at what did I achieve or look at what the team achieved, look what we uh, did together. Mm -hmm. So these were the most uh, important experience I've had with the team, uh, learning through writing. That's awesome. And I think it also helps you solidify what you've learned and share, and you teach yourself something as well. So Harleen, I have one last question. Um, I'm not directed as you is looking at retrospectively what you've done on the dojo team. Is there anything that you would do differently? In the pre-pandemic times, uh, whenever we had to uh, do a masterclass, what we would do is we'll have to uh, have four coaches who would have to fly down and run this class, right? So um, there is a cost involved and there would be limited number of people that we could train in, in the light, you know, live delivery. So, uh, what our training organization wanted was to scale uh, this model. So they came up with uh, this massive open online learning course uh, for the Dojo White Belt. Now, this is a great thing if you have to build a base of your concepts, you want to get started with your learning journey. But this is this is something which is not a replacement of a li live delivery. So. Um, what what I would say has uh, can be done uh, differently is to make uh, the massive open online course as a bite size learning uh, to be made it available to the people across Microsoft and then they should be given an opportunity to attend the live delivery. As we speak, I'm uh, delivering a masterclass in EMEA region, okay? And we have given them a lot of uh, videos to go through so that they can have their concepts right. Now, uh, when I'm uh, delivering that masterclass, I can adjust the pace of my delivery based on how the response from the audience is. And if uh, people are not able to understand certain concept, maybe I can uh, adapt and give more examples there to explain it better. But when we are in a MOOC uh, environment, it is more like a scripted uh, thing, okay? Mm -hmm. I cannot adapt to the pace of the audience. I cannot get a feedback that if they are able to understand that concept. So I, what I would say is uh, of all the learnings methods that we have seen, uh, learning from MOOC can be uh, considered as a base so that people can get started with the concepts and then uh, they should use different methods of learning uh, to enhance uh, their knowledge. Awesome. Thank you, Harleen. So for everyone out there watching, we're going to put a link up now for the blog, for the DevOps Dojo blog on experiential learning. So go there, have a read of it. We're also going to put that in the show notes. It's going to give you all the details that Harleen and Julia have just spoken about in further detail with some great resources as well. So I want to thank you both, Harleen and Julia, for joining us today on this episode with experiential learning. It's been awesome having you since you both contributed to the article. It was great to hear how you've gotten involved in the dojo community and produced that article so thank you both for joining the show and everyone stay tuned next time for our next episode on the devops lab where we have another episode on the devops dojo topics mm -hmm.